Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you again for joining us for another episode of uh, Are We Crazy? And today we're going to go over, uh, last week we went over two questions. Um, Lauren's getting questions from uh, fellow veterans, uh, different concerns, different topics. So every, uh, we'll, we'll try to do this maybe once a month. I know we're getting kind of busy. Yeah. So uh, once a month we'll come over here. So if you have any questions at the end of this episode, um, please uh, send her any questions you guys might have. Question number two. Question number two. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, yeah. I'm reading them all now. Question number two, <clears throat> April 10th. And this one comes from? Um, this one comes from Minnesota. Minnesota. Mm-hmm. I think this is a big question. Okay. I was I was fine. <laughs> Too, many words? Too, many Too words? big words. Okay. Too big words. Okay. I was fine until the second he cut into her leg. Oh wait. Okay. wait so the veteran wait. is watching a TV show. Oh, okay. Sorry. I, no, I sorry, wait, so sorry. the veteran is watching a TV show and um, he said that they're in surgery and, and whoever is about to cut somebody's leg off. Okay. Was he is it was it like a documentary or an actual movie? No, I think it was like a sitcom. A sitcom? Okay. Yeah. So he was fine until the, the second that he cut into her leg and she started screaming from the pain. Instantly, I was transported in my brain to Afghanistan to a point right after I was shot when the young man who eventually died was screaming. I threw my dog off of me and ran into the hallway and found my bedroom and collapsed. I don't remember going there. The only thing I remember was the screaming and noise from my attack and when my wife, my wife rubbed my back and telling me I'm safe and I'm home. It was so real, Lauren. Have I taken a step backwards in my recovery? Okay, so this guy is actually a, a former veteran of mine, and um, with permission, he told me that I could share a little bit of his background. Cool, so, cool, cool. Um, deployed once in the early 2000s, got out, has been a civilian DOD employee, and um, with his job, he frequently has to redeploy to locations around the world. Okay, so this was one of those locations in October of 16. Um, he was involved in an ambush in Afghanistan where um, they were. They were working with a and a. They were on a post that was supposed to be secured and, and even within the post, they were walking to their location and they were um, ambushed at that point. okay. So another guy ends up dying. This guy ends up pulling himself underneath a vehicle. He's been shot in the left hand and the right leg, if I remember right. And um, you know, so gunfire is gunfire is going, trying to communicate with others, fellow um, fellow employee is screaming because he's he's about to die okay and and he does he does die it was I mean it was it was a really bad scenario Um, so to that I would say the the question is really about flashbacks am I moving backward in recovery what do they mean all of those kinds of things flashbacks and nightmares are a maladaptive response to trauma that has not been processed okay so with that being said in times of major stress, when our body and our brain is simply trying to survive, we cannot possibly process all of the information that's coming in, which is why we have auditory exclusion. Um, we may not remember certain things of the traumatic event. We may miss pieces or certain details of it. Um, but overall, flashbacks are actually one of the least common symptoms of PTSD, at least in my mm-hmm. experience. Um, I don't have veterans that report them very often. This is the first one that he has had in three and a half years, so I am thrilled wow, with that. Good, we, yeah. He's not had one at all, so that's wonderful. The problem with flashbacks is that it is a trigger that elicits a response from the fight or flight area of your brain. So what that means is that the segment came on television, she's about to have her leg cut off and she's screaming and it hit that center of his brain where fight or flight lives and all of a sudden my body and my brain are reliving Afghanistan. So I feel sweaty, I'm nauseous, I'm hot and for him it was a it was a flight response. He took off to his bedroom, okay? And this is maybe a 2 to 3 second span, you know, him not remembering getting out of the chair, him not remembering throwing the dog off of him, not remembering anything until his wife is there saying, "Hey, you're home." You're good, all, all is well, come back to reality for me, okay? So part of it is knowing that this is a maladaptive response to trauma. The good news is, is that they don't happen very often. Um, the even better news is that the more you go through trauma treatment, the less frequent they become. And ultimately the goal of trauma work is to lessen symptoms in frequency, in severity and intensity, mm-hmm. okay? So if you were to come in and you said, hey doc, I have nightmares five to six days a week, um, the, the beginning goal would be maybe two to four nightmares per week, one nightmare a week, one nightmare a month, one nightmare a quarter, that kind of thing. And I have people who, man, we get it, we get it down from, gosh, I have one veteran who had two to three per night and was taking two to three showers Jeez. per night just to calm down, and we've gotten it down to one a week. Wow. So that is a huge victory, in my opinion. Um, what was the other note on there? 
So maladaptive symptoms and the fight or flight. They yes, and and so okay, let's talk about the feeling real part because we all have those moments after trauma where we know it's not real. Our frontal lobe says, I'm in Minnesota, I'm in Oklahoma, I'm at Applebee's, whatever. My frontal lobe says, calm the F down. But my body says, I have to get out of here. Does that sound about right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay, so what happens when it's the, I have to get out of here response? For me? <laughs> yeah, for, for you or for the general veteran population, what happens? Out. Just shut down. But what actually happens? What are you feeling? What are you experiencing? Just that moment. I mean, anxiety for everybody else. So what does that look like, though? What is the sensation? Is it hot or cold? Oh, yeah, it's hot. Yeah, okay. So, so people are profusely sweating. Sometimes mm -hmm. there's nausea. Sometimes there's vomiting involved. Um, hate to say it, I've made men throw up in my office before, you wow. know, because when we go back and we do trauma work, that fight or flight response is triggered, and they feel the physical or physiological response to that trauma. Even though it's not actually happening, it is stored in your nervous system, and that's what your brain goes back to when a flashback happens. Really? Yes. And that's what causes all the heat. Oh yeah, and, and for some people, <laughs> for some people it may be an overwhelming feeling of of cold numbness, um, but for most people it is heat because when we're fighting for our life, generally our heart rate is up, our blood pressure is up, those kinds of things. Does that now, make sense? Oh yeah, absolutely. Now, are all flashbacks bad for or? To have a flashback, is it bad to have a flashback? Because the other day I, I was able to talk to some of my uh, battle buddies. Actually, you know, we were all together, and then that, the next day I had I had a good flashback. You know, it was a, it was a funny one. So it wasn't it was a flashback of, of uh, by Iraq, but it wasn't about combat. It was just was about, it a memory or was it a flashback? Uh, what's the difference? I guess. Okay, good question. Good, <laughs> excellent. excellent. Follow up question. question. Follow up question. So, what is the difference between a memory and a flashback? A flashback is the literal reliving in the present moment of the past. So in my, my body and my brain both feel like they are reliving the event in Iraq versus a memory which is just remembering or recalling what happened and it's a ha-ha-ha moment. Okay, so it was a memory. Yeah, that's hey, what it sounds like. Pretty, I learned something new. Yes, yes, <laughs> absolutely. But so, absolutely. so it's not bad to have memories. Oh, no. Oh, no, okay. not at all. And, and, you know, that's kind of the kicker is people think that coming to therapy is going to erase memories, and that, that is not at all what happens. Um, for a lot of you, the concern is I don't want to go seek treatment because I don't want to lose those guys. I don't want to lose that event in life. All we are doing is taking the sting out of it. Afghanistan will always be Afghanistan, okay? I mean, I, I cannot change that. It's never going to be Disneyland, okay? So it will be Afghanistan, but it will be Afghanistan without the pain, so to speak. And the loss of memory, is that common? I mean, I've had that For happen. For trauma? Yes. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you have to think about how your brain is functioning in the moment because you can only absorb and process so much information, and that is stored in your hippocampus. So if your body is fighting to survive, again, blood pressure, heart rate, firing my weapon, pulling myself up under a vehicle, the information that's coming in and fighting to survive Fighting to survive is going to outcompete storing information. Okay, mm -hmm. so I, I can honestly say I've never had a guy come in and not remember something new. And and they'll come in, they'll say, I remember everything about that event. I can tell you everything from start mm -hmm. to finish, and it never fails. There will be some variable that they've forgotten about. One was the smell of diesel. Another was that there were three strikers instead of two, or what order they were in. And that ex exactly is the exact proof that we need to say that your hippocampus cannot possibly store all of the information in the correct order. Wow, that's yeah. pretty awesome. So there's, there, is a lot, there is a lot to it. Um, but again, if you're only having a flashback every three and a half years, fabulous, I'm thrilled with that. That's impressive. Yeah, that's, that is absolutely <laughs> wonderful. Um, and, and that just means that you deal with it when it shows up, you calm down, you figure out what works for you, you talk it through, and, and he even sent me a message um, later on, and he said, I know I'm not falling back in recovery, but it felt like it. It took me about a day to come back to reality to know that the symptoms may still occur. It's all in how I deal with them. So just to recap, he was asking if having flashback is, is a back step in recovery, right. and the answer is no. I'm right. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely those. not. Okay, absolutely good. not. Because the reality is, is that post-traumatic stress may lessen. It may never go away completely. Okay. okay. But if we can get the symptoms to abate, then ultimately we've, we've done well overall. Okay, for some people, it may go away completely. Mm -hmm. um, but for others, you know, I, I just don't, 
I, I would have to argue with that concept because how can we unsee things? Mm. We can't, right? Once the, tooth, once the toothpaste is out of the tube, it's, <laughs> it's out. There's no going back, right? I like that. Okay. So it, we can't unsee events. We can't undo memories. And we can't undo the impact or change that it's had on our thought process. True, true, true. So knowing that, why, why would they mm. ever go away? And really, um, for some people, maybe your life is, is better as a result of trauma. You know, maybe you appreciate things more. Mm. Maybe you don't take things for advantage like true. you used to. So it, it kind of all depends on the person. Well, we are out of time. Lauren, thank you so much for joining us again. Sure. Thank you for helping our men and women who are out there who need the help. And like I always say, if you need help, if you need counseling, if you need to talk to somebody, reach out. Everybody needs to reach out. Uh, don't be too proud to receive that help. And thank you everybody for joining us. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Take care.